Oh shit. I thought that I would like pin this part of my hair up and it would look like I have like really flat bangs like the Ramones do. And as we can all see, uh, it clearly worked. So welcome to episode two of Jake Watches Movies recommended by Jake's Movie Picker 2K. Uh, it's getting easier and easier every time. Uh, as you know, every episode we begin with the extremely important task of picking out our movie for, uh, to replace the previous movie on the list. Okay, there we go. I'm going to pull up the lists. Uh, here's a few interesting facts, maybe. Uh, so this is how I picked the cult films list. I just googled list of cult films and went to this uh, Wikipedia page. You can see maybe, it's hard for me to tell, but some of these are blue and some of these are purple from links I went to. I don't think I went to the K list. Uh, if you look on here from left or from right to left is the order that I picked the lists in. So cult was one of the very last ones, uh, which is why I just went through and did it as quickly as I possibly could. Um, which may not have been, I don't know. It's all about picking random movies anyway, so what does it matter? So let's pick a movie off of here that I have not seen before and do not believe is on another list. Um, hmm, let's stop here. Kroll? I don't believe that this is on the list. Oh, that, that picture alone says everything. Uh, let's just look on the master list for Kroll. It's not on there. There we go. 1984 film. 1983, actually. Great. So now that's added on the list. I just wanted to show off that I added a... So I have the Movie Picker 2K, I have the master list, and then I added this list, which is um, color-coded. And I would argue it is barely lookable barely able to be looked upon by human eyes because uh yeah it's rough anyway as i just made reference to the movie that we watched for this episode of the show was rock and roll high school a 1979 film directed by name here uh boom movie poster also right here um as i said last time my first impressions of this movie were that i didn't know anything about it when I looked it up, it was on HBO, and it said that the Ramones were in it, and I thought that that was pretty strange. Uh, so I started watching it, you know, because that's what I do on the show. And one of the first, like, things that popped up was that it was produced by Roger Corman, and from that moment on, I was sold on the movie, because I think Roger Corman just does some crazy stuff. Uh, truly, like a genius at what he does, which is something that maybe no one else is doing. But we'll get into all of that. Uh, I actually have some notes here this time. So hopefully it'll be a little bit more put together, a little, it'll just be a little bit better overall. Uh, I've also got a bug bite right here, which has been bothering me. But that doesn't matter. So let's just get into the things that we liked in this movie, the things that I liked. Actually, I thought that Something I didn't really do very well last time, which is giving a quick synopsis of what the movie is, because I think we're going to get into some pretty obscure movies on this uh, series, and I think this movie is one of them. Uh, so Rock and Roll High School is a 1970s film set in a high school. It's There's two main female characters. One of them is, you know, like kind of a goody two-shoes, good student and all that. The other one is more rebellious, she loves rock and roll music, she loves the Ramones. Um, the premise of the movie is that there is a new principal in town who is going to crack down on all these students who are messing around. Uh, the main student, Riff Randall, the main character, the bad girl, Riff Randall, camps out for three days to get Ramones tickets. She gets a hundred of them, she gives them out to all of her friends, and then the principal takes them away. And then in the end, her and her friend go to see the Ramones concert, and then in the very end, spoiler alert, uh, there's a big confrontation between Riff and her friend Kate. Uh, they're on the same team versus the principal. Uh, and there'll be a lot more to get into as we go along, of course, but that's the basic gist of the movie. Um, the things that I liked about this movie were that it was just, like, it was a lot of fun. I kept writing down moments that I thought were just funny or interesting, um, it starts off like one of the very first things you see is that this freshman, 
I think he's put into a trash can. I can't remember. The, there's so many things done to this freshman that it's hard to remember what the first one is. He's like put in a locker. He's put in a trophy case. He's put into a, a filing cabinet. He's just shoved in places that normal people don't go, but freshmen belong. So I thought that like that immediately set the tone of what this movie was going to be. But there were, you know, surprises throughout. So I just wrote down a few funny lines that I liked. Um, oh, there, Riff Randall wants to go on a date with this boy, Tom Roberts. And someone says, Tom Roberts is so boring, his brother is an only child. Which I thought was just such a good, uh, it's a good insult, but it's also like a good, it captures the tone of the movie in a lot of ways. Um, the principal has two... Uh, hall monitors named Fritz Hansel and Fritz Gretel, which on its own is a pretty funny joke. And there's a part where when, uh, so when Riff is, when Riff is uh, standing in line to watch the Ramones, uh, Kate comes into the office with a note that's like, hey, Riff Randall can't be in class today because her mother died, signed her father. And then she sends in a note that says, Hey, my father, or I can't come into class today. My father also died. And then the next day, there's a note that says, I can't come to school today. My goldfish died. And, you know, the principal is steaming mad. And she looks up at Kate and Kate says, you know, they say these things come in threes, which is funny. It's not on its own. But later, the hall monitors bring Riff and Kate into the office and they pull out her goldfish. And they're like, then explain this, which I thought was a really funny moment. And then one of them, I think Hansel pulls out the goldfish and eats it, which is just, I mean, a, cra a truly crazy moment. There's a scene where Riff is talking about how she, or Kate is talking about math and Riff doesn't use her textbook very often. And she says that she only pulls it out for special equations. I don't want to go through all of the jokes in the movie, but I think that it just really shows that there's a lot of nice moments throughout it. Something else that I thought was really cool was how, if I say like, oh, this is a 1970s high school movie, I think the immediate thought is that it's going to be pretty problematic. And I think that it's actually does a very good job of not being problematic. I mean, is it distracting that you can see my reflection or my screen when I look over there? Should I, I'm trying my best here. Uh, there's one part where there's like a Native American character and... I don't know, it's a little problematic, but then they make a joke that he's scalping tickets, which I meant to look into the history of scalping to see if that's a problematic term. I don't know. All this stuff is very complicated, and I'm not necessarily the person to talk about it, but I thought overall it was really nice. And the climax of the movie, it Kate does like a bunch of science stuff to help blow up the school, which I thought was really cool to like show... First of all, it's like two f main female characters... One of them is like good at science, which is, you know, something you don't see a ton in movies even nowadays. Uh, but like her, she saves the day through her science. There's also a moment where Riff's like, oh, well, what good would it be to like try to go on this date? And then she's like, well, there is sex and that's pretty good. And I just thought that that was a nice moment because, you know, even now, like sometimes it's, it's like taboo to say, oh, women like sex. Uh, but, you know, they're just people. So that, 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 all of that stuff was really nice. Um, just the overall tone of it. There's just so many like ridiculous little moments. Maybe I'll put it in a couple clips to just show, to further illustrate what I'm talking about. Or maybe not, because I already talked about like specific moments of the movie for far too long. But I thought that it was just really fun. And it almost had like a Ferris Bueller's Day Off feel of where like it's just ridiculous. And I think even amplified above that, like... I was looking on IMDb and there were some people talking about like continuity goofs. And it's like, there's a scene where the, this like goofus character just eats a goldfish and it's not even addressed. Like this is not, <laughs> this is not a movie that takes place in the logic of our world. So I thought that that was a lot of fun. Um, On to things I didn't like quite as much. Maybe this should have been a disclaimer right up front, but I'm not a big Ramones fan. I actually don't really like punk rock. Uh, Some people will debate me on that, but... I think I like just music that that anything that's like punk rock or harder typically I'm not into uh and it's not I don't dislike the Ramones I just have never had any particular interest in them 
And they do play a very major role in this movie. There are, I think, seven songs that they perform to varying lengths. I don't think they play any song fully, but some of their songs are short, so I can't say that for sure. But there's a concert where they play like five songs, I think. And you know, there's other stuff going on, but it is a, a heavy part of the movie. So if you really hate the Ramones, you probably won't like this movie. But as someone, like I said, I don't really like the Ramones, and I still enjoyed the movie a lot. And something that I thought was really cool was that there was other, uh, like, other songs in it. Yeah, so I thought that this was going to be, like, some jukebox, mu jukebox musical at first, and then I didn't know what it was as it went on. But there's, like, music, and I kept, at I kept wondering, like, is this the Ramones? But there's, like, Alice Cooper music, there's Devo, all these different bands. And I thought that, that was really cool, because it really captures the tone of w that time, while also giving a you know, a heavy amount of the movie to the Ramones. I thought it was a nice balance, but at the same time, like, that is just not something that I care that much about, and there is just a really heavy focus on all of that stuff. So it just didn't keep my interest in the same way that if it was a band I really cared about, I thought it would. Like, if you're a Ramones fan and you haven't seen this, go watch this movie because there's just so many performances and all of that from the Ramones. Those are basically my overall thoughts. There were... You know, just a few moments that didn't work quite as well for me. But overall, I thought that the movie really was good. I thought it was really funny and in like ways I didn't expect it to be. Um, I'll talk about one more in my moment that stood out to me. But I think it's time to give it an overall review of the movie. Which I think, again, and I don't want, this, I don't want it to seem like this is just who I am as a reviewer. But I think I'm going to give it 8 out of 10 because... It was just a lot of fun to watch, even though I didn't know what to expect going in. And I'm not a big fan of all the music in the movie. It still really works for me. Um, yeah, the downsides being that I wasn't a huge, I'm not a huge fan of the music. And, you know, some of it is a little corny, but I think it works overall really well. So eight out of 10, uh, I don't want, I don't, I'm not just the eight out of 10 movie guy. It's just that I happen to get two, two good movies. Uh, if you're looking for like some goofy movie and not the goofy movie, if you're looking for some sort of like goofy movie to watch, you're in that sort of mood and you, you know, you're into these sort of things. I think this will be a really good movie for you. Uh, the moment that stood out to me the most, and I wrote this one down as well, is when, sorry, I just, I can't read what the, f I don't know what this one's supposed to say, but the moment that stood out to me the most is at the very end of the movie, before the final like confrontation, the principal, uh, oh, what is her name? It's something I can't remember. Um, the principal is like burning a bunch of Ramones records and the students take over the school and then the Ramones show up and they're walking through and the principal's like, oh, it's always nice to meet prospective students. And they're like, we're the Ramones. And the principal like steps back for a second and says, do your parents know you're Ramones? Which is just, man, that's a, that's a great line. I think that's really funny. Uh, I think there's a lot of really funny lines in this movie, as I said earlier. So onto just a few, a couple cool things that I learned about this movie. Um, as I said, it was produced by uh, Roger Corman, who is famous for many things, but one of them being that... <clears throat> You know, he just does these things on a very low budget. So I have three quick facts related to that. The first is that um, the main character, Riff, the main actress, she bought like most of her own wardrobe, including a $300 jacket, which is just crazy to me. Uh, the second is that, um, oh, they barely paid the Ramones like any money. I think they paid them like $25,000 between the four of them for like clearly a lot of time of filming if they're... I mean, just to film seven songs of the Ramones probably cost, I don't know. So the Ramones had to like play, they had to play shows in California to make money to stay at the hotel. And then the third one is that Roger Corman uh, let like some music industry people be in the movie for free in exchange for like getting to talk to the Ramones on set. And I just thought that that was pretty funny. All right, I think that that is... I think that that's basically all of my thoughts on the movie. Um, I could go on and on about the moments that I enjoyed about this movie, but I don't think that that's n totally necessary. Uh, this is exactly the sort of movie that I set this 
uh, project up to see because like this is a movie I didn't even know existed before last week and now it's a movie that I really enjoyed and I would probably go back and watch it again especially you know if it's one of those days where you're just in a mood where you want to watch that kind of movie I think you get it so now it's on to everyone's favorite time of the show picking what we will watch next episode I always say we but you know it's really just me here uh, you can watch the movies too if you like if you disagree then feel free to tell me why I'm wrong I don't care. All right, I have the Movie Picker 2K pulled up. I'm going to randomize this list. Perfect, it is random. I'm recording, I have the die. I've been practicing getting it on frame, so. Nope, failed there. That is lucky number 11, which is cult classic again. All right, that's part of the nature of it being random, right? So, let's get the big boy. Got him here. Definitely didn't keep that in frame. All right, it's... Hasn't finished wobbling. That's... Okay, I thought it was 28, but then in the camera it looked like it was 82, but it was because it was upside down. 28, so let's go to the list. Randomize the range. Go look at number 28. No way! What? <laughs> what? What? How? Okay, that's crazy. I have 2,000 movies to be picked here, and you saw it all happen. Oh my god, it's Crawl, the movie we just replaced Rock and Roll High School with. What? Look, look in my eyes, this is, oh my god. What? When we got Colt, like, there was part of me that was gonna joke and be like, oh, what do we get, or when we got, yeah, when we got Colt, I was gonna be like, what are we gonna get, Crawl next? That's, that's, I don't know, that's, I'm gonna go buy a lottery ticket, because... The odds of that happening are 1 in 2,000. Um, wow. I'm really, I'm really surprised here. I mean, if it's not obvious from... Oh, I'll put these back on to finish out the, the episode. Uh, if it's not obvious from me picking it earlier in the episode, I don't know anything about this movie other than it's a 1983 sci-fi movie. It looked like it had some sort of godzilla e monster on the cover. I don't really know. <laughs> it's I don't know that's crazy that that happened um so check back next time to see if we watch or see what I think of crawl and see if we get another cult classic movie that I replace cult crawl with there's there's 2,000 movies on the list and I just happened to pick that's I mean you saw the dice you saw me randomize it I don't know I don't know what to tell you uh thank you for watching uh, it'll show where to subscribe and stuff. And sub subscribe here where to follow us. <laughs> Sorry, there's a hair somewhere on here that I... Oh. Okay.